let's say we have instead of a long straight wire, let's say we have four segments. So we have a square loop here. So here's four straight segments. And we have a couple of different observation locations. And conventional current at the top is running uh, to the left. So we have this loop of conventional current here. What's going to be the direction of the magnetic field at location A, which is in the plane of the loop, right in the center of that square loop of wire? OK, so we're getting an answer, answer 5, positive Z direction, right? And how would you figure that out? Where that comes from where? OK, so we're using this right-hand rule, right? And we can do it for four different segments. So at the top, we have the, uh, in your choice of right-hand rule, right? You can either say the, th the thumb points in that direction, and if your fingers wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field, when they curl on the inside, my fingers are pointing out, right? Or I could say that uh, I DL cross R hat, I DL is pointing that way, curl the fingers down to, uh, in the direction of R hat, which points towards the observation location, thumb points out, right? And I do it for the top segment, and my thumb points out, and I do it for this segment here, where the current's going upward, and I delta L cross R, again, gives my thumb pointing out, and I do it over here, where the current's pointing down, and I delta L cross R, my thumb points out, and so no matter which segment I choose, I get the same direction. They're all adding up to give me a net magnetic field pointing out of the screen at that point. What about, okay, so no, no major trouble. What about at B? This is a little trickier to think about. Okay, most of us are saying uh, negative Z direction. That's actually going to be turn out to be correct. The, the magnetic field outside of the loop, but still in the plane of the page, due to this loop of wires, is going to be turned out to be in the negative Z direction. Now, it's a little tricky to see, but you can kind of make a plausibility argument. So here's the segment, the segment that's closest, and that's going to make a magnetic field pointing in what direction? That's going to make a magnetic field pointing in, right? Because we have I cross R thumb points in. So I have, if this is 1, 2, 3, and 4, we have a delta B1 pointing inward. What about the field due to the top segment? What's that direction going to be? That's actually going to be outward, isn't it? Because if I draw an R vector from here to here, I have I cross R thumb points out. What about for three? Same thing, right? I, delta, cross R, thumb points out. And for four? It's also going to be out. So how do I know it's pointing into the board? The, uh, the, yeah, the other segments are further away, right? Because so when we're doing this uh, via Savar law, it's also the distance that matters. And so... Presumably, delta B2, delta B3, and delta B4 are pointing in, but their magnitude is smaller than the magnitude of the field, or pointing out, but the magnitude of the field pointing in is much larger. Okay? And you can kind of see that, you know, first of all, this is a very large angle, so that's going to be a small cross product. This is a very small angle, that's going to be a small cross product. This is a large distance, okay? So that's going to be a, a small magnitude of that field compared to this segment here, okay? We haven't worked it out and formally proved it, but you can kind of see how it would be plausible. Now, a loop of current, like, any qu everybody okay here? Questions? So a loop of current is actually kind of an important configuration. And we want to take a look in more detail at this. We're actually going to look at a, a circular loop, okay? So let's imagine we have a wire, and we've got a battery in it, but we're not going to worry too much about the battery. And it's just a circular loop of wire. And the picture here has got the loop of wire in the, uh, in the x, y plane. Kind of drawing this in perspective, and z is coming out like this. And so here is wire 
And current, conventional current is running, let's see, conventional current is going that way. So if we're looking straight at the wire, the conventional current is running um, counterclockwise. And this is the Z axis. And so it has a radius, capital R. And we're looking at an observation location that is on the Z axis. So 0, 0, Z is our observation location. And so we would have to apply the BSFR law just as we did for the long straight wire. We'd have to break it up into segments. And we look first at a little segment of wire at the top. So delta L is pointing uh, in the direction of the conventional current at the, at the very top. We're going to figure out the direction of the magnetic field just due to that little segment at the very top. Delta B1, we'll call it. What's going to be the components of delta B1 due to that segment at the very top? Which components are non-zero? It's just the magnet, the the piece of the magnetic field just due to that little segment at the top of the loop. The, okay, we're measure, the observation location is on the z-axis. Okay, and the we're talking about the that magnetic field due to the segment at the very top of the loop. Okay. So that that yellow vector there is the r vector that points from the source to the observation location. I'm sorry? Just that segment. Just that segment. Just that segment. Okay. Not quite unanimous. Some people are saying uh, it's just going to have a Z component. Some people are saying it's going to have a Y and Z component and a smattering of other answers in between. Let's, um, let's change the perspective a little bit. Let me r rotate the picture. And so there's the y-axis, and there's the z-axis, oh, excuse me, z-axis, and then x is going into the board. Positive x is going into the board, positive x. And so my loop is then lined up. I'm looking at, uh, at the loop kind of lined up uh, edge on, an edge on view of this loop, right? So at the very top here, from this point of view, the current's come doing what? What's the direction of the current? It's coming out towards us, right? Okay, so capital I is pointing that way. So that's the direction of delta L. And my R is pointing like that, right? So let's do the cross product. I delta L is coming out towards us. The R vector, curl the fingers down that way. And the thumb kind of points like that, right? So I'm going to get a delta B. that has what components? It has a Z and a Y component. Okay, so Y and Z are going to be non-zero. X is zero, okay? But those of you who said Z, you're probably thinking a, a step ahead because if I do the same thing down at the bottom, what am I going to get? Don't even have to pull here. What am I going to get? I'm going to get y, uh, y and Z again. So if I do that segment, What's the direction of the current at the bottom segment? Into the page, right? Into the board. Okay, so that's delta L. And there's my R vector. That's delta B1. What am I going to get for delta B2? Kind of down like that, right? Uh, delta L cross R, thumb points kind of like that. Okay, you have to bend your wrist around quite a bit. What's going to happen when I add those up? The, the y's are going to cancel. You're going to end up with a z component, right? And if you just follow that all the way around the loop, we're going to end up at that location with a net magnetic field in the z direction. In the z direction. So let's actually do that. Let's do that with a little program here. Okay, so there is the loop. And let me just change the perspective here just to show you. So this is a loop of current. And this uh, purple vector at the top is the delta L vector. That's the direction of the, uh, of the uh, current. Kill the lights. You can see this. And the red vector is the R vector. So that's pointing to the observation location. 
And so I, I use BSFR law. I say I delta L cross R for the first segment, and I get that direction of delta B, which is what we just said, right? And then I move to the next segment, and let me show it from this point of view, and you can see how the direction of the magnetic field, or the delta B, the, the little piece of the magnetic field, has changed, but the magnitude didn't. And I keep doing that as I go around the loop. And there at the bottom segment, we got the direction we expected. Okay, keep going around. Show from this point of view. Keep going around. And so we've gone back to where we started from. We add up all those delta b's, and you can you can kind of see from this perspective that all those y components are going to cancel. But we end up with a net a net z component for the magnetic field. Okay. So what would we get at the very center? Would it be zero? Would it be zero? What did we find for the uh, the square loop at the very center? Yeah, it was pointing in the positive z, wouldn't it? Wasn't it? It does. So I mean, just look at the loop here again. If you're at a point at the very center. So this is kind of uh, this is not like the charged ring. At the very center, you actually do get a magnetic field for a loop of current. And if that's delta L, and if that's R hat, right? Delta L cross R hat gives me a delta B out. But if this were delta L going in that direction, and that's R hat, delta L cross R thumb points out. So everywhere along that axis, it turns out, at the center or even behind it, you're going to get a magnetic field pointing in the positive z direction. And let's just do it at some other observation locations just to see what will happen. I pick a different location. This one's not on the axis, and so you notice that some of these delta b's are longer than others because the distances are different for different segments, right? So when I add those up, I'm not going to get uh, perfect cancellation, and you get a magnetic field kind of pointing in that direction. And I do it for a similar location down below. And I do it for a location there. And notice, again, now it's really kind of skewed. The closer segments are really contributing more to the magnetic field than the ones that are farther away. And you get that direction. In that direction. And then on he this location, this is, this is a location very similar to what we asked about for the, uh, for the square loop. And we said for the square loop, it pointed in the opposite direction. So let's see if we get the same result here. And you notice they're all either lined up in one direction for directly on the, uh, in the plane of the, uh, of the loop. It's just that, again, the closer segments make a, big, a bigger contribution in the negative z direction. So when I add those up, I get a field, net magnetic field in the negative z direction. Same down here. Do it again here. And then again, if I'm on the z axis once again, I still get a net magnetic field in the positive z direction. Where have we seen this before? This is a dipole, right? This is a dipole. Only it's a magnetic field, not electric field. And so. This is, in fact, a loop of current is sometimes called a magnetic dipole. Okay, because it produces this classic dipole pattern of field. You have a, uh, along the axis, the magnetic field is pointing in one direction. On the perpendicular axis, the magnetic field is pointing in the opposite direction. It kind of curls around as you look at different observation locations in between. Okay? So this is a dipole pattern of field. The, now, you can go through the BSFR law, do the derivation. I'm not going to do it. It's worked out in the book. What you would find is you'd get a result for the magnetic field uh, for a loop of current on the, uh, on the axis. So we're looking along that z-axis again magnitude. And the result works out to be mu naught over 4 pi 
2i times pi r squared, capital R is again the radius of the, of the loop, divided by square root of r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. Okay. Again, you can look at special cases. When we're at the center, z is equal to what at the center? We're at the very center of the loop. That means the z is equal to 0. Thank you. 0. Plug, in the, uh, plug z is equal to 0 in here, and you find that the magnetic field is, in fact, not 0, Okay, just like we expected it to be. So at the center, we get mu naught over 4 pi 2i times pi r squared over r squared plus 0, or r squared to the 3 halves is going to give me r cubed. Or r cubed, excuse me. And then r squared and r cubed divide out, and we get just 2i pi over r. So we get a non-zero result. It's not important what, what exactly the result is, but you get a non-zero magnetic field at the center, just as you have a non-zero magnetic field everywhere along that uh, center axis. What's more interesting, though, is for cases when the distance z is much bigger than the radius of the loop, So if r squared plus z squared, if z is much bigger, this is going to approximately be equal to just z squared, right? Add something small to something big, I just get something big. So this is mu naught over 4 pi, 2i pi r squared over z squared to the 3 halves, or mu naught over 4 pi. 2i pi r squared divided by z cubed. So it's 1 over the distance cubed. Where have we seen that distance dependence before? For a dipole. So it really does behave like a dipole. When you're getting far enough away, if the, if the loop is small enough compared to the distance, then it really does behave like a dipole, both in the direction and in the magnitude. A okay? um, couple of things. One is this quantity i times pi r squared. Pi r squared is what? That's the that's the area, right? So that's the area of the of the of the dipole of the loop. And this quantity i times the area is sometimes called the given the symbol mu, which is a little unfortunate. It's not. It's different from mu naught. It's a different word using it, doing double duty with this symbol. This is called the magnetic dipole moment. Okay, so just as we had an electric dipole moment, which was Q t charge times the distance, just to quantify the whole thing as one uh, easily measurable entity, then we do the same thing with magnetic dipole moment. Okay? All right. Um, I think we're going to stop here, and we'll talk. We'll we'll say a couple more things about dipoles on Monday, and we'll also talk about bar magnets, ferromagnets.